Let's talk utility stitches. This machine is full of different stitches that you can use, variety of techniques that you usually see in garment patterns and home deck patterns. We're gonna start off first with the triple straight stitch on the A stitch, but in the stretch area. So turn your stitch length all the way down to S. And to show really what this is good for, I'm gonna go ahead and fold my fabric on the diagonal or the bias of the fabric. This is actually gonna take two stitches forward and then one stitch back. This is really gonna give you a beautiful straight stitch. It's gonna have the give that you need. And it's gonna be triply reinforced. So when we take it out, let's take a look and see what it's gonna look like. So see how pretty this stitch actually is? So if you've ever wanted a, a thicker thread to look like top stitching, forget it. Put the color of thread you want on the sewing machine, pick the stitch and let the sewing machine do the work for you. Look how it stretches. Wouldn't that be great on a pair of pants like where the seat area is? Well, that's cut on the bias and you sure don't need to be ripping that seam out. This will be definitely triply reinforced. Sometimes I use that stitch for actually the um, let's see, on handles of a bag, where those handles will go into the bag at the top, and then I'll use that stitch to go across it. So it doesn't look like I've gone across it three times to reinforce it, it looks like one smooth stitch. Now B is the zigzag version of this, and you can just go ahead and switch it over and almost have more of a decorative type finish. This is great with variegated thread, by the way, kind of like gives you kind of a rickrack look as you go. We'll just do that far to let you see what we're talking about. Utilize these stitches sometimes with some of your fancier thread, and you really can see that even though they look like utility stitches, they can add some great detail to your projects. Let's go ahead and do a blind hem next. That's actually letter C, and then that is also back on our regular stitch length. So come back to, I'm gonna start out between two and three. The blind hem foot is adjustable. And so first thing we're gonna do is get this set up for the fabric you're working with. Now your book will kind of remind you how to fold the fabric, but this is really what you're after. First off, you'll press in your new hem. That's gonna be your final hem when we're all said and done. Then what we're gonna do, if you look at the right side of your fabric with your fold on the left side, you're gonna pull all your fabric also to the left. You leave about a half inch sticking out the side here. That's gonna give us something to stitch on. So since the stitch goes to a bite to the left and then does bite, 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 or stitch, stitch, stitch on the right side, being that we are, have a mechanical machine, we don't know where it is within its setting. We're gonna set it on, oh, we'll, we'll go ahead and do four. It doesn't matter really with your width because what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your length. Right now, the needle is over here on the right-hand side. Hand turn it until you see that needle swinging to the left and then hover it, there it goes. I'm gonna hover it right above my fabric. I'm gonna move my, I'm gonna lift my presser foot, move the fabric over. I'm gonna bring that needle a little higher, there we go. Move it down over, so when I can drop that in there, I'm gonna catch as little of this fold as possible. Now this is a little medium weight fabric, almost like a flannel fabric. So I wanna catch just enough of it, and then what I will do is take and turn the screw of the foot, move the guide to be right up against the fold of the fabric. Okay, now as you get this set, the key is that you get consistent bites into this fold. And so as I run it, all I'm doing is watching where I've lined up the guide with my fabric. We'll see how we go here. You know, you're always gonna test your fabric. And with fabrics that are finer, you'll have to take a, a little smaller bite so it doesn't show through so much, and also use a finer needle. So this is what it's gonna look on this side, and then this is what it's gonna look on that side. Isn't that great? If we had matched our thread on this fabric, we wouldn't have seen that at all. Press that down, you have a blind hem just that easy with your foot that comes with your machine. I also like to use this foot for edge stitching or top stitching. I can always just put that uh, guide right up up against the edge. Let me say if I turn this back to A with the needle position over here on the left hand side, we could easily top stitch. Let me move this back a little bit. And we could set that for how deep of a little top stitch we want to actually take across there. I love a foot for this because it makes me look like I can sew very, very straight without me having to really guide it. I don't even have to think. Okay, so there's our blind hem. We're gonna switch over now to doing 
something that is like an overlock stitch. Many of these stitches are gonna be overlock like stitches and actually go all the way to P here. P on the top row. Um, anything that is a stitch that bites to the right this time is a stitch that we're gonna have that goes off the edge of the fabric. We're gonna show this on some knit fabric here. I'm gonna take a piece of fabric and kind of cut a curve out of this. I love these scissors. They're meant for just single weight or single layer use, but they have the, they always look like my little kindergarten craft scissors, but they are from Ginger and they are rounded at the tip. So if I have them hanging on me with one of the little um, pins here, that they're not gonna cut into my um, clothing or anything. Very safe. Okay, so I'm gonna just put a regular foot back on. You can purchase overlock feet that have a nice little guide, which I prefer, but with the foot that comes with the machine, we're gonna go ahead and set this up. This little curve is gonna be like a neckline up against our, a t-shirt, for example. We're gonna take some ribbing, fold it in half. We're gonna put the two raw edges of the ribbing right next to the raw edge that I cut. Now, the idea is that when you have this stitch position, you want the bite that's going on the right to go off the edge of your fabric. Now, since my first stitch actually it's hovering on the right, I'm gonna hold those threads so nothing gets hung up. Shorten your stitch length a little bit. Let's see here, let's go about two, see how that goes. You kind of end up pulling on the ribbing because ribbing's always cut a little bit shorter, smaller than your cut area you're going around. You're gonna to need to guide it kind of on the inside of this toe so you really don't have much to guide by, but what I'm watching is that the needle's going into air. There's no fabric on that right side when I'm stitching. Okay, all the way around. Notice what I'm doing with my fingers on this side. I'm really just pulling that edge to the foot as I get to it. Also, a ballpoint needle would be recommended for any time you're working with knit fabrics. This is what it's gonna look like on this side. Stretches, yay. And this is what it's gonna look like on this side. Check out our needle videos and check under ballpoint needles for needles that you need to use for this type of fabric. Okay, let's take one more stitch. Let's go ahead and go to Q. Q is also a stitch that's meant to go off the edge. We're gonna make it all the way wide, a little longer just to make sure, being that this is a heavier fabric, if you're working on fleeces or anything, by the way, you can push your presser foot up manually, force it up, and you can get really thick layers underneath that. But this fabric is very linty. And so as we're stitching, I'm gonna make it a little longer. Let's go up to about three and a half here. Again, we want the needle to swing off to the right side and kind of overlock our fabric, but we're also seaming it at the same time. So it's kind of like a serger, just done all at once. The only thing a serger does in addition is actually cuts the fabric for you. It has a little bit more professional looking stitch when you're done, but this will give us an idea. But see how pretty that is? And once you kind of get past the part that's still unraveling, it will not unravel any further. So when you wash it, it's gonna really hold what it needs. But then you have a nice, strong seam on this side. So any of the stitches that jump to the right, you can set them up to go off the edge of the fabric and you have a wonderful overlock stitch selection on this machine.